Hello guys, uh, this is uh, Tina again. Uh, in this video, I will show you how to using Java Configure to do the exactly same thing. So here on the screen, you will see I have uh, two projects open. One is XML, one is Java Config. XML, I already lead you how to do from scratch, right? We also ha I also created Java Config. But what I did is I create a main project called the Spring Validation Java Config. Then I copy all the source code here, and then I remove config XML file. I remove web.xml file because uh, that's the difference between Java Config and XML. The only thing is if you use XML, you use XML to do configuration. If you use Java config, then it means you're using Java class to do the corresponding configurations. All other code, I didn't change anything. So now, in order to use Java config, you do is you create a package called uh, config. To be clear, this Java class, the Java classes on the config is for configuration. It's not for actual business logic or things. Okay, so now I'm gonna close this one, and uh, let me close all of them. Okay, and then I'm gonna open this one in a big screen. Oh, this is XML. Sorry, where's my Java config? This one, I think. Yes, this one. So add the package. Now the first one you have to configure for the dispatch servlet, right? So you write a class, any class name you want, dispatcher, servlet, what thing? You need class, okay? And this one you have to extend, abstract, annotation, abstract, annotation, abstract, annotation, configure dispatch servlet initializer, okay? And then on here, I think you have to, uh, you have to, sorry, you have to all implement the default methods, or uh, implement the abstract method in this abstract class, okay? You have three things. This one is to um, configure for the root application context. We haven't touched that. That is mostly for connect to the database. You can return now. And this one you have to configure one, which is to configure for the view resolver, component scan, and notation driven, those things, okay? And this one we have to make sure all the requests that will go through this dispatch servlet. So first, next let me create a class for our web application context configuration, okay? So goes back, wow, it's so big. It goes back, then I go here, I create another class called uh, Web application context config, right? Uh, any class name you want. The better one you can implement web and basic configure. If you don't implement, somehow in certain features it will automatically works. But if you're using other format, it won't work. You must implement web and basic configure, okay? And after you have that, you go back to your dispatch server in the class. Here, you add one, okay, call this one dot class, okay. If you still don't know what they're doing, you can go back to my, uh, the probably the uh, first, uh, third video or fourth video, I, I explain those in details, okay. This is the basic. And in this one, you have to do is first add a configuration, which means you can define the bins here. Then next one, you add uh, enable. Let me see. Next one, you have to add a component scan, which you make sure it will find all the controllers, initialize all the controllers, re uh, services, repository, those things. Okay. You can do. You can also give multiple. Okay. Uh, next one, I have to do a regular one, which is uh, uh, add the what thing called the uh, internal resource view resolver, it, which is to resolve for this one. Where's my XML? This one, which is you have to configure for this one, right? You have to configure for the view resolver, okay? 
and uh, let me write a bin for that. Okay, goes back to our Java config. Okay, have a bin. Is a bin or all right? I couldn't remember. Oh my god, public internal resource view. You get internal resource view resolver. Okay, and then I will return it. And here we will create internal resource view resolver. View resolver equals new view resolver. Uh, internal resource view resolver. So fast. View resolver dot set prefix. Prefix is uh, web info GSP. Make sure you have a slash here, okay? And the real result dot set suffix. Oh, this is should be prefix. Okay, this one suffix is dot GSP. Our controller is the logical one, right? Return view resolver. Okay, and that's it for uh, TO if we don't add any uh, message resources. And since we add message resources, we should do corresponding uh, configurations as you did in XML, which means you have to do this one, you have to do this one, right? And you have to do this one, okay? How to do that? I don't want to type from scratch and forgive me, I will just copy paste here, okay, and make changes, okay. It's too much to me to type, okay. Okay, and this is local editor, and this is validator, okay. okay. So let me explain. Here, uh, if you want your uh, project to recognize those two messages, you can using set. Uh, sorry, let me remove this. One. You can you can using resource bundle messenger resource. Okay, you can also using what we used inside XML. See here, in XML we re using reloadable resource bundle message source. When using reloadable, you have to have a class path here. But when using resource bundle message, you don't need to have a class path. You just give the message names. One is error messages, error messages. The other one is messages. Second one, you have to define bin for the validator, and you have to tell you are using validator. Uh, you are using validator, and in the validator factory bin, you have defined. Okay, I'm gonna using externalize the error message, which is this one. Okay. Next one is to register the validator, and you override the get validator, and you call this method to using uh, this uh, local validator factory bin to do validation, and also using this resource to find the externalized error message. And that's all the configuration you have to do. For your logic source code, you don't need to touch anything. So let me go here, and then local and then you go deploy you can go choose either one of them okay and then you start your application uh, do you know this error that's the extra step you have to do inside uh, when you're using Java config because he is using separate APIs when you use Java config so here inside the dependency, you need to add another one, which is a Java X dot servlet, right? API. This one and using four. You can give to be a provided word, provided scope. Oh, sorry, scope is provided because this job exists in uh, where in Tomcat. You just make sure it pass the compilation time, compiler time. Okay. We don't want to wrap it and to the Tomcat. Tomcat already has one. Okay, 
uh, you know why here would, that is a 4 4, right? Because uh, uh, this number is wrong. It go to job config. Because in our controller, I don't have any uh, handler method to handle the slash. Usually using slash user, slash uh, add, right? Slash user, slash add, okay? And then when I see here, this one, this one is using the uh, spring message to resolve the values from message of properties, right? Uh, when I click add, you can see all the error messages are fetched. Okay, everything is the same. So this version is a short version to show you how to configure in uh, by using Java classes. The only thing you need to add compared with the previous demo. Um, yesterday I upload some videos talking about the formatter. Is yes, you do is add those bins. Okay to recognize the messages, to make sure you have a validator, then to register a validator, okay? That's it for this video. And if you have any other questions, you can leave a comment. And uh, if you like my video, please click like and share with your friends. And see you next time.